This land has been in production as a cattle ranch for over 150 years. It's part of the heritage of this land. If we were to be infested with cattle fever ticks, it would shut the industry down, kind of like mad cow disease, causing huge economic damage to large ranches, infesting millions of acres of native rangeland. That would be bad for the land, it would be bad for the heritage of this entire operation. So this goes all the way to the ocean, I'm guessing? This goes all the way to Laguna Madre. This is the line of infestation. This is the line that we hold. And on this side, it's, it's tick free where they're actually scratching hot right there. They're scratching hot on the other side of this fence. Yeah. This has been effective for almost four years. Hmm. It's a lot of labor, but when you look at what's at stake, uh, the infestation of a cattle herd here that could then infest a lot of territory Make headed. an impact on the rest of the United States. Absolutely. So anything that makes it over here better not have a tick on it. You know, we've got three animals that'll carry these fever ticks mm -hmm. all the way up to our southern fence line. Okay. Obviously cattle, but they get on white-tailed deer mm -hmm. and they get on Nilgai antelope. Nilgai, their native range is India and Pakistan, and that's where fever ticks come from. So right, it's like, perfect. Yeah, Nilgai met their, you know, an old friend. Exactly. Made it to South Texas. Cattle fever ticks really had a huge impact on the cattle industry in Texas. First brought to North America by cattle from Europe. What the cattle fever tick was, was a, a tick that carried an organism that caused babesiosis. And it just basically was a real threat for the livestock industry. When these ranchers wanted to market their cows, they moved them north and the, the landowners in Kansas started recognizing this. Every time you Texans bring your cows through here, my cows all start dying. I had family that were cattle drivers and tick riders. And these tick riders would ride up and down the herd. If they found them, they'd have to turn the herd around. In 1900, the USDA took on a massive project. They said this, is, this cattle fever is gonna ruin the cattle industry. And so they started a program to eradicate the cattle fever tick from the United States. And it took them 40 years to do it, but they did it. By about 1940 or 1945, cattle fever ticks were eradicated from the United States. Nilgai antelope show up in Texas in about 1920. They seemed like they could adapt themselves well, and they did. As those populations increased, we had an additional host for cattle fever ticks. That has been a huge problem because we have ways we can treat cattle, we have ways we can treat deer, but Nilgai don't come to bait, and so the medicated corn thing doesn't work. You know, you can't round them up and spray them, you can't vacate pastures, you can't do all this other stuff. Right now, we have no viable way of treating cattle fever ticks on Nilgai other than shooting the Nilgai and removing them. The fact that we know so little about these animals only enhances their allure. So much of their behavior is shrouded in mystery. While this is a major hurdle from a research perspective, when it comes to hunting them, it makes the pursuit that much more rewarding. Trying to understand their patterns and predict their movements, it's all just a guessing game. All right, there's a bull way out there. Oh, I, I got him. I feel him now. He's got a long time to change his mind and go somewhere else. That's a big bull. He's spooked. He's running. Total shooter. There he goes. Oh, what a bummer. Here's one of these nematode sprayers. Just a big game trail here. There's no gap in the fence or water or anything, but it's just a corridor. 
this would be the sensor and it'll it'll spray up from down here nematodes little tiny worms can infect ticks and kill them the chemical big ag companies produce these worms commercially because they use them in citrus crops. The tank here holds the solution of the entomopathogenic nematode. So when the sonic sensor picks up the uh, movement of the animal, the mist of water and nematodes comes up into the air to spray the animal as it crosses. If we could find a way of getting those nematodes on the ticks on Nilgai, it could be a way of killing the ticks not making the meat unfit for human consumption. And, you know, this nematode has that potential of doing that. We think we've got a good system here that can treat the animal and do it in a very, very safe way. Come here, boy. Come here. Don't bite yourself. My kids worry about it all the time. And they say, you're going to get bit. And I, I said, no, I'm not going to get bit. If I get bit, it's not going to be by one of my snakes in the cage. It's going to be out here walking around the ranch. That's how, I'm, if I get bit, that's the way it's going to be. When you have a ranch for sale in South Texas, the first thing that the prospective buyer is going to ask you, does it have now guy? If you got now guy, your ranch is worth a lot more money. There's certain people that would like to eradicate the now guy because of the cattle fever tick. Our group is a nonprofit and we are interested in the research. We're, we're just recapturing. Yeah. Our hopes are to find a way to stop the cattle fever tick from spreading. It's a huge collaboration between a lot of scientists and that's what we believe in is that, you know, it's just like AIDS or polio. We're gonna have to do it through research. Today we're going to be capturing some animals that we've got radio collars on. The idea is to collect ticks off the animals so we know what their tick loads are. I know some of you guys have come out and the other guy captured before. And I know some of you are used to only working up here. And it's definitely going to be a little different. VHF antenna to get a good idea of where they are. So once they see them, we'll chase them down. You'll hear that net gun go off. Ground crew will tie them up for us. Hold them down. We'll all race to the meal guy. Collect their data. Go watch out, watch out. Get our collars. Get that animal up and going again as fast as possible. It's pretty fast paced. The guys on the ground, helicopter crew, do most of the, the rodeo. It's over there. Look a lot around the ears, um, on the brisket and belly, you know, up in the armpits, and then back around the tail is, is where the ticks seem to be most abundant. We're gonna be using this measure of ticks to figure out if our treatments to reduce tick numbers are working or not. Two, release on three. One, two, three. Everybody watch out. <laughs> Too bad of shape. Good job. Good job. <laughs> you get up in country like this and uh, you really think about like the sands of time. You think about cattle fever tick issues, something that's been 
going on well over a hundred years, you know, they had under control and it's a major issue again. This part of the world is so crucial for the cattle market that uh, infestation happens down here. It's gonna make an impact on the entire cattle market in the United States. Kind of a scary thought. But at the same time, it's really exciting to get to spend time on a place like this. It is at the forefront of that fight. Get to see how much dedication goes into uh, taking care of what we got before it's too late. Big bull, dude. Clear, way, way out there. About 800 yards. Sticks. Yeah, he's running way back here. Just watching. All right, there you go. I think we got a dead bull. You see their legs come up over them like that. It's usually a good sign. In there? Right here. Yeah, right here. That is a big animal, man. My gosh, dude. But you don't realize too, like just how pretty they are, you know? The character on them. So now, I mean, once you kill one, what is, what's the drill? You gotta call USDA? Or yeah, we'll call Animal Health, Texas Animal Health Commission, get a tick inspector out to uh, scratch him, make sure he's free of cattle fever ticks. Pretty wild, the success story that's, that's going on here right now the past four years since they built that double fence my biggest question and probably a lot of people's question would be is that enough though i hesitate to say that the only thing we need is more research but we do need more research we need more research into how we can treat nilgai so that they aren't the primary vector of cattle fever ticks one of the greatest things about being a wildlife manager in Texas is we are given the right to do what we want to with our property. And I think that's you know one of the biggest benefits of being here. But along with that right comes a strong responsibility to do actions that are gonna make that property valuable and sustainable in the future. These large rangelands, these ranches like El Sal's have an economy of scale. What that means is that if you fragment them up, they lose their ability to operate. They're less likely to provide suitable habitat for wildlife. You don't have healthy wildlife, and it's a worse place for us to live. If you're gonna find solutions, it's gonna take not just research and education, but teamwork. For the sake of the economy, the wildlife, and future generations, I have to believe that together, we can take ground in a way where everyone wins.